Good morning. I'm Kathy Riley. I'm a minister member of the Presbytery of Transylvania. Along with Mary Reed, I am pleased to bring this worship service to you. I hope that it will be meaningful to you and a blessing as it has been as Mary and I have prepared it for you. It's good to be with you. Please join me in the call to worship. The Lord gathers us from north and south, from east and west. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, who is good. Those hungry for hope, those whose souls are parched, the Lord leads to fountains of grace. God's faithful love endures forever. Come, O people. Draw near and hear the words of the Lord. We come with gratitude and praise.
We are people born of water and the Spirit. In our baptisms, vows were made that we would faithfully follow Jesus, and yet we know that we fail to do so. But we also know that God is full of mercy and grace, and in that confidence, we are bold to confess our sins together. So let us now join in the prayer of confession. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we have watched you kneel at the feet of your disciples and rise from the table to offer them bread and cup. You came among us as a servant and commanded us to follow your example. Yet we are hesitant to humble ourselves as you did. We ignore opportunities to serve you by serving one another. Remind us, Lord, that the greatest among us is one who serves and free us to embrace our calling to be your hands in the world. Amen. Friends, hear the sound of the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. scripture reading for this morning from the gospel is from Matthew's gospel, chapter 23, verses 1 through 12. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others, but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues, and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. And now our reading from the Psalms, Psalm 43. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From those who are deceitful and unjust, deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you cast me off? Why must I walk about mournfully because of the oppression of the enemy? O send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the harp, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of this word. Amen. So I have a feeling that I'm not the only person who's had this experience. You're sitting in your living room watching a movie and someone in your household plops down and starts watching it with you. And pretty soon the questions start. Who is that guy? Why are they all so upset? 
why isn't anyone listening to each other? And on and on. And being a kind and patient person, you stop the movie. You also want to be able to finish it. So you hit pause and you explain what's been going on. Well, we're in kind of the same boat when we listen to Psalm 43, as we just did. It seems that it is probably not its own psalm at all. It's probably the ending of Psalm 42. Now, as you heard, Psalm 43 starts out with very strong words, demanding that God take action. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against unjust, ungodly, lying people. We have no idea who these people are. We don't know what cause it is that the writer wants God to defend. And the psalmist seems to feel rejected or at least abandoned by God, and we don't know why. So we need to hit pause and just get some of the backstory. We won't get all the answers to our questions, but it will help if we listen to verses in Psalm 42. So I'll read them with some pauses as we go. Here's how it begins. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, where is your God? So we know from the opening verses of Psalm 42 that something has happened to a person of such deep faith that he finds himself longing for God the way we might long for a glass of water if we'd spent an entire day out in the hot August sun in Kentucky. For the psalmist, life itself depends on God. This is a person in pain. And yet it is also a person who has known the joy of worshiping God. The psalm continues, these things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude keeping festival. As I first read these verses when I was preparing for this worship service, I thought of everyone around the world who, all the people who have not been able to be with throngs of people streaming into a worship service, singing out our hearts to beloved hymns, gathering in the fellowship hall in the parking lot for conversation, for coffee, for cookies. And even if we are worshiping face to face, there are limited numbers, masks, distance. And the psalm says, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Well, I think we could find any number of answers to that question if we were to ask it of ourselves today. The coronavirus continues its grip on the world and our communities with no end in sight yet. We've missed graduations and weddings, birthdays and anniversary celebrations. Our disquiet ranges from the mundane, where even grocery shopping is stressful, to the deeper loss and pain of funerals for loved ones without the blessing of a service in a sanctuary. And yet, we are a people of faith. And even in the midst of our anxiety and our grief and our frustration, we do turn to God. With the psalmist, we say, hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. These verses moving from the cast down soul to hope in God are repeated twice exactly in Psalm 42 and again as the closing words of Psalm 43. 
This is the movement of nearly every psalm of lament, where we see what Old Testament scholar Walter Brueggemann calls a cycle of disorientation and reorientation. It's a cycle that is repeated in Psalm 42, 43. It's a cycle that many of us have known in our lives. And it's a cycle that many of us are experiencing right now. The world we know has changed. It's just turned upside down in so many ways. And for some of us, this disorientation has brought challenges and questions into our lives of faith. Seminary professor Rolf Jacobson says that these psalms, these two psalms, give voice to the times when we just don't feel like singing, even if we could. These ancient words may speak to us when we are disquieted, discouraged, discontent. Psalm 42 moves from the lovely words about hoping in God and praising God back to remembering God with a cast down soul and surrounded by enemies who sneer at us about the God who seems to have gone missing. These are words for times when prayers seem to go unanswered, when illness continues, when loneliness does not ease, when worry adds to worry. Now there is nothing wrong, nothing unfaithful about feeling doubt and fear and grief. As a therapist and a pastor, I don't know anyone, including myself, who's not experienced these at some time. Most of us will dwell in difficult and dark places, at least in some seasons of our lives. But we know that that is not the end of the story. Like a deer longs for the cool flowing water of a stream, we need God in our lives. And so we turn again to the light. We move from despair into hope, from doubt into trust. And if we move back the other way, when the dark clouds fill the sky again, if we have trouble lifting our eyes and our hearts and our prayers to God, we remember we are not alone. For the witness of the Psalms, of all the scriptures and of Jesus Christ himself tell us that we may cry out to a God who seems distant and removed, who nonetheless is still there. So what is the word, the good news that we can strain our ears to hear when things are difficult? Psalm 43 offers this word. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God to my exceeding joy. And I will praise you with the harp, O oh God, my God. So yes, there may be times when we dwell longer than we like in discontent and discouragement. Our worries and anxieties about COVID-19, about our finances, about the impact of all of this on our children, on our parents and ourselves, all of those may have a firmer grip on us than we wish. Sometimes we might convince ourselves that it's getting better and at least we're feeling better and then some new story comes along and we just want to jump in bed and cover our heads with a pillow. Those times come. Oh God, send me your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Help me hold steady. Help me remember the joy of your love, O oh God, and the blessing of worshiping you. Let your light and your truth and your love, O oh God, sustain me in this moment, in this day, in this season. So whether it's the season of COVID-19 or other seasons of our lives that bring disorientation and disruption, 
We can live in and through those times knowing that there is light and there is hope. And here's another reason this psalm spoke to me and I felt led to preach it this day. Psalm 43 doesn't say, all is well, I'm happy, everything's good and joyful right now. It doesn't say that. And we may not feel those things right now, but we do live in hope and in faith that we will again. These two Psalms are kind of like our own inner conversation with ourselves. We tell ourselves hope, hope in God, oh my soul. And so we remind ourselves that no matter what we might be feeling in a dark or pessimistic moment, we will again, praise God, we will again feel joy. We will someday, if not today, sing joyfully out loud with the crowd around us. Then, then will I go to the altar of God, my overflowing joy. Some of us are already there. Some are optimistic and buoyed up with hope and love, consistently seeing all the good that there is in the world. Some of us see and feel the light of God most of the days of our lives and we can help others to see and to feel it. If you are there, if praise and joy and hope and light flow in and through you, I trust you are letting it all spill out onto others lightening their burden, their load, just a bit. If you are among those with a cast down soul, a heavy heart, remember, you are not alone. There will always be people to help you see the light again. And no, however far away God may seem, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. The hope we have in God is our song, it is our prayer, and it is one we share with all the people of God around the world in all nations. Hold on to this hope. Share this hope. Live in to this hope. May it be so for you and for me and for all God's children. Amen. This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is my home, the country
Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from north and south, from east and west, to sit at table in the kingdom. This is the Lord's table. We have loaned Jesus our tables this day. They are his. He invites us all to partake of the feast that he prepares for us. Let us pray and give thanks. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the earth and the heavens. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. Praise to you for the gift of this holy meal. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and upon these gifts of bread and cup. Bless this feast. Grace our tables with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ in the world. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love with all your holy ones in all times and places. With the earth and all its creatures, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. And now we are bold to pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we remember that on the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. I invite you now to break your bread. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. He poured it out, saying, This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, remember me. I invite you now to pour your cup. Friends, as often as we come together in any configuration to eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the saving life, death, and resurrection of our risen Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you now to share your bread and cup with one another in whatever way is best for you. The body of Christ, the cup of salvation.
trusting that all have been fed. Let us pray. O oh God, send us out from our Lord's table to follow his summons into new life and to follow him with joy and gladness. Set our feet in his holy way that our lives may be signs of his life and all we do may show forth his love. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, you are our God. We know that you are with us in all the moments of our lives, even in those when we confess we cannot feel you. And so in this hour, we give you thanks. You are the living God who provides water and light, sometimes just enough light for us to take the next step. And for that, we are grateful. We ask that you would continue to send your truth your light, your love to us and to all your people, to the world that is struggling these days with coronavirus, with unrest, with injustice. We ask your healing presence to those who have lost loved ones we ask your healing presence. To those who look up and ask how long, O oh Lord, until justice comes rolling down, we ask your healing presence. Lord God, we know that we are your people and you are our God. Help us even in the moments when we cannot sing to know the song is in our heart, a song of praise, a song of hope, a song of mercy, the song that your people have been singing from generation to generation. As we call out to you for guidance, for help, as we call out to you with thanks and praise, let the song of all the nations be one song, one song that lifts our hearts to you, that lifts one another up in love. May the prayers of our hearts, spoken in silence, spoken out loud, spoken alone, spoken in families, may those prayers reach you and may we know that they are heard. For those of us who are strong and healthy, as we give thanks, let us also share what we have with others. And for those of us who need a hand, help us to have the humility and the strength to reach out and ask for someone else's care. This time of worship is holy and sacred and we offer it to you as we offer you our lives. Accept our offerings, O oh God, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Our service has ended. Go forth and serve the Lord in love. And may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be upon you and yours this day and evermore. Amen.